Well, we lost an hour of sleep over the weekend, but you are right on time for this Monday edition of CNN Student News. Hi, everyone. I'm Carl Azus. First up, we are bringing you some international headlines. We begin in Iraq, where the U.S. military is planning to reduce the number of American forces serving in the Middle Eastern nation. Officials announced that 12,000 U.S. troops will leave by this fall, the result of, quote, an increased level of security and stability in the country. Currently, there are 142,000 American forces serving in Iraq. President Obama has announced a plan to withdraw most of them by August of 2010. While the situation in Iraq is improving, there is still violence in the country. Yesterday, 30 people were killed and 61 others were wounded in a suicide bombing at a police academy in the capital city of Baghdad. Most of the victims were police officers and recruits. The same academy was targeted in a similar attack three months ago. Well, moving to Africa now, where the new prime minister of Zimbabwe is recovering from a deadly car accident. Morgan Changarai was injured when a truck collided with his vehicle on Friday. His wife, Susan, was killed in the wreck. According to members of his political party, Changarai believes the truck driver caused the accident on purpose. Party officials say they're launching an investigation into the incident. And the real IRA, or Irish Republican Army, is claiming responsibility for a deadly attack in Northern Ireland that claimed the lives of two British soldiers and left four other people seriously wounded. Officials have condemned the violence. They say the attackers are trying to destroy recent progress between Irish and British officials. Before a 1998 peace accord, Northern Ireland was marked by violence for decades over whether the territory should remain part of Great Britain or become part of Ireland. And back here in the U.S., the unemployment rate is higher than it has ever been during your lifetime. In the last six months, the U.S. economy has lost more than 3.3 million jobs. That is more than the entire population of Chicago, Illinois, the third biggest city in the country. Candy Crowley looks at how the government is responding to the losses. The president traveled to Columbus, Ohio to tout his economic plan in action. 25 newly hired police cadets, courtesy of 1.2 million in stimulus money. I look into their eyes and I see their badges today and I know that we did the right thing. It was an upbeat photo op designed as a help is on the way message, undercut because by fresh evidence ago, of the enormity of the problem. We learned that we lost another 651,000 jobs throughout the country in the month of February alone, which brings the total number of jobs lost in this recession to an astounding 4.4 million. The picture is as broad as it is deep. Jobs lost in February included 168,000 factory workers, 180,000 professional and business service jobs, 104,000 construction jobs. Financial companies took 44,000 people off their payrolls, and the retail industry cut 40,000 jobs. Well, that is not a future I accept for the United States of America. That is why I signed the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act into law. The president is noticeably more upbeat now in effort to this help restore consumer confidence, Columbus. key to a recovering economy. On Capitol Hill, Democrats greeted the jobless news with hope that the president's plan will set things right, while most Republicans remain skeptical. Our financial system has become clogged with toxic assets, and until they are removed, fear and uncertainty will continue to dominate markets and our economy. The president has promised his economic plan will save or create three million jobs over the next two years. It may be that his own job rides on it. Candy Crowley, CNN, Washington. 4.4 million jobs lost since the start of last year. That is a massive number. But what does it mean for individuals, and specifically for you, teenagers who are looking for work or working? Ali Velshi breaks down some of the statistics behind these unemployment rates. At the beginning of this recession, December of 2007, the unemployment rate in this country was 4.9 percent. Stayed steady that way until about March, then it started ticking up. Take a look at this. Once you get to October, once that credit crisis started hitting, companies couldn't uh, make some of their payments. Uh, they started laying off people. Look at that, 6.6, 7.2, all of a sudden 8.1 percent. And that's how it breaks down uh, totally. Let's break it down by, uh, by, by age. Uh, you've got adults uh, with a much lower unemployment rate than, uh, than teenagers have. Adults 
women uh, have an unemployment rate of 6.7 percent, adult males 8.1 percent. But take a look at teenagers. This has been a problem for a long time. People uh, looking for work uh, at an early age, 21.6 uh, percent. Big problem for young people looking for work. Well, you've seen the numbers. Now it's time for you to get on CNN Student News. And I don't mean just your blog comments. I mean you. Send us an eye report telling us what kind of impact this recession is having on your life, your school, your college plans. How are you working through the situation? What solutions have you come up with? Find out how to submit your videos at CNNStudentNews.com. A word to the wise. Turbine. A machine that's driven by the pressure or momentum of a moving fluid, such as water or air. A wind turbine in Atlanta, Georgia is generating electricity along with a lot of interest. The 45-foot tower is providing power to a restaurant, and the owner says he put it up to help the environment. But it turns out that visibly going green comes with a bonus more business. Reynolds Wolf explains the eatery's environmental efforts. Just a typical greeting from owner to customer, but Tad Mitchell's Atlanta restaurant offers a lot more than fried catfish and a glad hand from the boss. He's made green his business. From waterless urinals in the boys' room, biodegradable to-go boxes, and a small wind turbine for generating electricity. So what's a wind turbine doing in the middle of downtown Atlanta? We thought it would just be a, a really good idea and a, a gr green objective would fit with our green game plan. And it's just, uh, it's been a lot of fun. One of these wind turbines in this location right here will prevent as much CO2 from going into the environment as an acre of mature healthy trees. A turbine like this one can generate electricity in winds as low as 8 miles per hour. And it can produce anywhere from 200 to 400 kilowatt hours per month, typically offsetting about $60 from Tad Mitchell's utility bill. President Barack Obama's stimulus bill provides a 30% investment tax credit to consumers who purchase small wind turbines. But in an urban environment where wind can be scarce, a wind turbine could prove better at generating customers than electricity. A small wind turbine really needs a consistent winds in order to function uh, as expected. Wind or no wind, with an upfront cost of up to $25,000, a small wind turbine like Tad's had better earn money somehow. When we were choosing renewables, one big, one big factor for us was the turbine had a lot of visibility, and we think it's helped to drive customers, and people uh, generally feel good about coming in here to eat because they think that we're doing something good for the environment. So whether it's for business or the environment, or even both at the same time, a small wind turbine is something Tad can feel good about and so can the customers. I'm really glad to see uh, small businesses like this taking a, a stab at renewable energy and I, overall I think it's a great move. Reynolds Wolf, CNN, Atlanta. And finally today, police usually tell you not to get involved if you witness a crime. But a bank robber in Bethesda, Maryland is in custody thanks to some citizen style justice. Nancy Yamada of affiliate WUSA cracks open the case. I wasn't even thinking about doing anything. I just did it. But Jerry Gibbons admits it's not every day that you run into a bank robber and then spring into action to take him down. But when I tackled him, money went everywhere. It was pretty crazy. Police believe the would-be robber is none other than the same guy who robbed the same bank, the Bank of America on Wisconsin Avenue, two weeks ago. Today, after pepper spraying a teller and walking out with a bag of money, police say he tried to make his getaway in a cab. But little did he know that Gibbons, a customer who had just witnessed the chaos and others weren't willing to let him get away. I didn't think about it until after the fact he could have had a gun or something like that. But. Witnesses watched as the group chased the slow-moving cab in rush hour traffic through downtown Bethesda where the bad guy got out and the good Samaritans pounced. Well done to them. It definitely kept the person from getting away. Back at the bank. I think people did what they thought was right at the time. Opinions are mixed about what can only be described as one unusual deposit to the local jail. And I don't know that I would have done the same thing. Police hope you'll never be put to the test. We don't advocate the, the people uh, giving chase and taking the law in their own hands. But in this case, it did work out for the best, and uh, they, they did a good job. And that robs us of all our time for today. For CNN Student News, I'm Carl Azus.